It is noon in Cairo. It is 6 a.m. at Cape Canaveral, Florida. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is World One, live from London. From dictatorship to democracy, Egyptians are about to head to the polls to vote in their first free presidential elections in over half a century. More than a dozen candidates are in the running to succeed Hosni Mubarak, who was ousted in last year's popular uprising. The voting takes place on Wednesday and Thursday, and with so many candidates to choose from, there's a strong chance it will go to a runoff next month. CNN's senior international correspondent Ben Wiedemann is live for us in the capital, Cairo, with more on that. Ben. Yes, Manita, yes, Egyptians very much unsure of... Ben, thank you. Ben Wiedemann there in Cairo. We want to see what newspapers are saying about this in the United Arab Emirates. This is the headline in the national Egypt's new president must limit his military's influence. It's a comment piece that says there is little appetite among Egyptians for prolonged political strife about the role of religion. Indeed, the real showdown in Egyptian politics is not between Islamists and liberals. It will be between the civilian government and the military. There is an opinion piece in the International Herald Tribune with this headline the final task for Egypt's brass and it goes on to say ultimately the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces should step aside clearing the way to democratically elected civilian institutions the trick is to make sure that happens in a safe orderly and dignified manner and we'll end in Egypt with the uh, weekly paper Al Ahram this is the uh, headline the last stretch uh, the long stretch the front page article says whatever the result no one is suggesting simply electing a president will solve Egypt's problems the Constitution remains unwritten and no one knows under what conditions uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Supreme Council will voluntarily relinquish Power. The dawn of the private space age is upon us. For the first time, a NASA mission to the International Space Station is underway using a spacecraft built by the private sector. Three, two, one, zero. And our resident space expert, John Zarella, joins us now from our CNN bureau in Miami with this historic mission, John. Yeah, no question, Manita. You, you use the right word. It's historic because, uh, you know, NASA uh, could not continue to fly the space shuttle. Adding to the excitement, if I said to you the words, beam me up, Scotty, would you promise not to think I'm crazy? Yeah, you know, a lot of people were asking about that. Uh, a, uh, a lot of rumors, a lot of stories going around. Uh, moving on to some other news, Nisara here on our World One. The government of Yemen says an affiliate of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is responsible for Monday's grisly suicide attack. The interim president of Mali has been beaten unconscious at his presidential palace. We're watching World One live from London. It has been over a year since Japan's devastating earthquake and tsunami that changed the lives of so many people. But across the ocean in Alaska, debris from the disaster is washing ashore and it is creating an environmental hazard there. The to salvage the wrecked Costa Concordia cruise liner is getting underway over four months after it hit rocks over the coast of Italy. More than 4,000 passengers and crew were on board when the ship ran aground. 30 of them died that night in January. Two are still missing. Brian Todd takes a look at the task ahead. Millions of tons of debris from Japan's earthquake and tsunami last year are now washing ashore in Alaska. The waste is turning the pristine beaches of southern Alaska into landfills, and more is expected to follow. Casey Wyan joins us now live from Yakutat to Alaska with more on that. Casey. Yes, Monita, I'm actually on an estuary, the banks of an estuary, about 20 miles outside of the remote fishing. Fish Casey, thank you so much for that. Casey Wine reporting to us there. You're watching World One live from London. We now to Egypt to, to speak to Shahira Amin. Up until early last year, Shahira was a senior anchor with the local broadcaster, Nile TV. She was also its deputy head. Well, she quit in February 2011 in protest of the channel's coverage of the uprising. She joins us now live from Cairo. Sh uh, Shahira, thank you so much for being with us. You know, we look at that list of uh, candidates that, we, that you see there in Egypt. Does anyone that you think on that list is someone that, would, that many Egyptians would see as a viable uh, contender as president of the, of the country. Monita, 
you know, this is very exciting for a lot of Egyptians because it's uh, our first... Lots of strong women like you, Shahira. It's always good to speak to you. Thank you so much for joining us uh, live here on World One. Shahira Amin there, live for us in Cairo. Well, NATO leaders have agreed to withdraw international combat troops from Afghanistan by the end of 2014. But beyond the battlefield, there's another fight going on in the area of female education. The Taliban appear to be making gains in their effort to control some of Afghanistan's rural schools. Nick Payton Walsh brings us more. In parts of rural Afghanistan, the battlefield is everywhere. Anger is boiling over in South Africa over a controversial work of art. Vandals have attacked this painting by Brett Murray, which lampooned President Jacob Zuma by showing... All right, Robin, thank you very much. Well, we did, Robin, we did ask uh, South Africans what they thought about uh, Brett Murray's portrayal of their president, and uh, CNN's open mic asked for their reaction to the controversial portrait, and this is what they had to say. We're not talking about Beverly Hills. We are talking about the Lakers. They are eliminated from the NBA playoffs. How and why Pedro Pinto? I have all the answers. All the answers for you. It's easy to find the reasons why the Lakers were knocked out of the playoffs by Oakland, right? Of course. Of course. They struggle to just, make yeah. ends meet. I just don't know how they pay the bills. You know the new Anchorman's coming out. And you just took away my line. Really? Yes. That's what I was going to ask you if you were a fan. I Pedro, love it. you're stealing my thunder. Okay, I want a mustache like him. <laughs> Ron Burgundy, yes. you really? Yes. Where's your scotch? Stay That's classy. <laughs> Stay classy. Yeah. Okay, why don't you take away the tease then? Why don't you be anchorman and take okay. the tease? You're watching World One Live from London coming up. We'll tell you what's trending online <laughs> and what's heading your way on the weather front with. Mari Ramos. Oh, Mari? that's right. Pedro, stay classy. I like that. <laughs> Let's take a look at what's trending on social media right now. At number three, one of the most popular stories on CNN.com and a social media favorite, the successful liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket. Right now, the privately owned spacecraft is on its way to the International Space Station, and that's got plenty of you in cyberspace excited. And then we've got this story coming up. Pedro pretty much alluded to it. Number two, good news for Anchorman fans. Ron Burgundy is back, and there's a teaser to prove it. The preview for Anchorman 2 is one of the most popular videos on YouTube right now. Filming is expected to begin later this year. They just can, they could just film our show. I think that would be a hit in Hollywood. And now, who's got the star power to knock Anchorman off the most watched video top spot? The name's Bond at number one. The trailer for the new James Bond movie Skyfall is out and has had over a million hits on YouTube in just 24 hours. The teaser doesn't give away much of the plot, is there usually one, but promises the usual feast of action. Let's uh, get a check of the weather situation where you are and go to Mari Ramos with the latest. Mari. Hello, Monita. Yeah, I can't wait to see the next anchor, man. That's going to be great. So, Skyfall. you know, if you like summer, Monita, it's going to feel a little better. You know, you've had a little it bit is of cool weather lately. It is certainly feeling like summer outside here in London, and I'm <laughs> loving it. Mari, thank you very much. You are watching World One live from London. I'm Monita Rajpal. Thank you for joining us. We'll update you on the news headlines at the top of the hour. Stay with us here on CNN. Three, two, one, zero.